Is it the ancillary interest? Does it have the same? Commissioners, good morning. My name is Michael Shirk. This case comes before you on a towing and booting act violation. In this case, a proposal for decision was issued on November 10th, 2015, in which the administrative law judge found that respondent Atlas Towing and Storage had engaged in two tows in violation of the Towing and Booting Act. Um, prior to the hearing, or the hearing itself was held on August the 3rd, 2015. The record, the evidentiary record, closed on September 14, 2015. Neither party filed exceptions. And as mentioned, the proposal for decision was issued on November 10, 2015. <clears throat> Specifically, the case involves two Class F violations, which are treated as first violations given respondents' enforcement history. They involve towing in the absence of, among other things, legally adequate signage. Neither party filed exceptions. Staff recommends that the proposal for decision be adopted as written. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Shirk? If not, we'll uh, move to who would like to testify on uh, behalf of the. Commissioner, I'm David Fritchie. I'm the counsel for Atlas Towing and Storage and have a brief presentation based upon the record in the case. Okay. Uh, I'm here accompanying, good morning, commissioners, all commissioners and staff. Mr. Shirk, uh, I'm here with my client representative today, Mr. Ricardo Venegas, and his wife is here too, Olga Venegas, sitting in the back row, who works with him in this business. Atlas Towing um, tows about 1,500 vehicles a month. We are here today about signage. This commission, is, as I have sat here, has considered some very, very serious matters in the six cases preceding this case. We're talking about an issue, one tow in 2013 and one in 2014, one of which the sole basis for the PDLR prosecuting this case was because the signage had a de minimis <coughs> difference from the statutory language. All the language was there, but it was out of order. And if, if I may approach, we have copies of Exhibit 17 that I would like to hand out. Was this presented at the SOA hearing? Yes, and admitted by I Prosecutor so. Shirk. There is a de minimis difference in the signage issue. It is de minimis in that the sole basis of the TDLR's complaint on this sign was it did not state verbatim the statutory language. All the words in the statute are in the sign, abandoned, inoperable, or the like. They're just out of order. Now, I would ask the Commission, in considering upholding, if the, if the Commission is going to uphold the ALJ's recommendation, I'd ask the Commission to look at this sign and ask yourself, does this sign adequately and completely inform the consuming public that enters this parking facility of the type of vehicle that's going to be towed. There is nothing misleading. There is nothing deceptive. There is nothing criminally negligent about the signage. This is the sign that we're talking about. After you have considered six cases involving crimes from aggravated assault, possession of cocaine, we're here now about two signs. And I would like to read into the record uh, from the transcript 
of the tow hearing three statements. First, at one hour, seven minute, 12 seconds of the hearing, Officer McCulloch, who is the San Antonio police officer who investigates towing issues in San Antonio, was on the, st was on the stand, stated in response to my questioning, my question, was it okay for them to patrol the property at that time? Yes, was the response. So it was okay to patrol. And did she, the complainant, or the person who was towed, indicate that there was any issue with the understanding that under a patrol, Atlas could make the tow? McCulloch, under a patrol, Atlas is allowed to make the tow. As far as that particular space, she did indicate it was a parking space. Second area is beyond the one hour, eight minute, 50 second. Uh, questioning again of Officer McCulloch. So I'm clear, there are two entrances to this apartment community you testified to. Response, yes, sir. My question, is the signage at the, I would call it the primary entrance, where the monument sign is, and the signage at the ancillary entrance, does it have the same wording based upon your investigation? McCulloch, I always check that, so if there would have been a discrepancy, I would have had it in my notes. Question, so both signs would have had red curb, red curbs or tow zones? Yes, sir. The same sign at every entrance, and we are here talking about fining this company two grand, two thousand dollars, on a tow that happened in thirteen, a tow that happened in fourteen. In fact, I would ask you to take notice of what the ultimate proposal for decision was by the ALJ where Judge Arnold said there's no reason to even consider, which is what the TDLR wanted, uh, to suspend the license. Um, the respondent refunded all fees associated with each tow before the staff began an enforcement action against it. The fees were refunded, yet staff continued and took up the complaint, filed a complaint, and prosecuted it before the ALJ judge. And then 13C, the tows were unlawful because of the inadequacy of signs maintained on apartment complex property by the apartment management, not because of intentionally wrongful acts of the respondent. I would ask the commission to disregard the findings of the ALJ judge, and in this particular case, dismiss the proceedings, or any alternative, reduce the fine to some de minimis amount as the signs are de minimis. After sitting in listening to some of the serious nature of what this commission has to consider on a on a regular basis before um, for you, um, in particular these six cases this morning, I'm, I'm frankly professionally embarrassed to have to sit before you on signage. Um, I would ask the commission to dismiss this case, or if the, if the commission is not inclined to do so, do some sort of equitable reduction in any fine or assessment as to the respondent. Thank you. And Mr. Venegas is here uh, to answer any questions, if the commission has any questions. Thank you for your time. Uh, Mr. Ritchie, I also understood that the signage was um, uh, placed too high it was. and that uh, the parking lot entrance was too wide and that there was inappropriate signage. Um, so uh, not only was it the wording incorrect, but there was also some other uh, uh, issues. issues with the signage. So it if I may address that, Commissioner Morgan, I have Exhibit 10, which was introduced by TDLR that I would like to show the commission. 
if I may approach. Was that presented at the solar hearing? Okay. okay. Yes. This is the entrance and the signage that is at issue. So part of the issue is from what location is the signage measured and whether or not, remember this is placed not by the respondent and not controlled by the respondent, it is placed by the apartment management. Now that is a unique set of grades there where that sign is posted. You've got a retaining wall coming off the curb in the, in the sidewalk of, of Blanco Road in San Antonio, and the sign is then posted based upon where the actual bollard is to hold the sign. And I don't think there was any evidence at the time of the hearing that the signage, if measured from the bottom of where the bollard enters the ground on where it's placed, I don't think there was any evidence whatsoever that in fact, that in fact, it was at the wrong height based upon where it is mounted, where it is installed on this property. I would also point out, and I don't want the commission uh, to be, I want them to differentiate. We're talking, this is toe number one, the Seville Apartments, where they're was raised an issue about the entrance. You can clearly see that there's one entrance to the right of the monument sign. I also want to point out that as to the second toe, the only, only allegation by the department is the language in the sign, not where it was placed, not how it was installed. And you have before you as Exhibit 17, I'm sorry, Exhibit 17, the signage at issue in the second toe, which is identical actually to the signage in the first toe. So, there is a practical issue on the installation of this sign. Where could you possibly put it? There's no evidence that it was not at the proper height based upon the fact that the pole was in the ground at a certain level. And um, I, I don't know that there is other than putting up an entrance to a, like to a ranch and putting the, some big arch or something, I don't know how better you could possibly inform the public with regard to this signage. And there was another entrance that was properly marked that's not at issue. Tenants at this property regularly use that entrance and it's not like, and, the, and the, the particular toe here was of a tenant. There's no issue or allegation that she never saw this sign. So the only reversion of the department with regard to this toe is respondent towed without a proper sign. Um, Ms. Bailey White uh, was a tenant, she had a lease with parking requirements. There's nothing more I can say. She had notice. So what was reverted to is, well, we can't get you on that toe, but we're going to try to get you on this de minimis issue with the signage. Um, what is the difference? Do you have what the wording should have been compared to what it is? Commissioner Yurko, yeah. The ALJ went into some detail in this beginning at uh, page four, and this is not the first time that we've had a proposal for a decision come to the commission and be adopted by the commission, which found a violation because the language was not as authorized by statute. Chapter 2301.301 B5 has three sets of phrases which the legislature saw fit to put within quotation marks. And what the administrative law judges found was that when the legislature put that phrase in quotation marks, okay, the phrase I agree, are, I agree that, that we're not an issue. I think he's already conceded that the wording went the same. I'm just trying to determine how different this sign was from what the legislature would have. The legislature required the sign to say, unauthorized vehicles will be towed at owner's or operator's expense. 
simple, plain, uncluttered language. I would also point out that this sign does contain deceptive or illegal terms. For instance, all red curbs are tow zones. You can't color code parking lots just because of the sign that you have out front. If you wish to have specific designations of tow zones, the law states that those parking spaces have to be noticed as tow zones. Uh, the, the entry sign to parking facilities is supposed to be clear, concise, and put drivers on immediate notice while they're making a turn and looking at a sign that's, what, 24 by 18, that uh, who is authorized and who is unauthorized. Okay, question. Um, and I'm not sure who could answer this better. Uh, what happened to the actual citizen with regard to the tow? Did she have to pay for the tow? Was she reimbursed? What was the situation? She was reimbursed before the department began its prosecution of this case. Okay. And then um, if the signs would have been correct, would the tows have been lawful then? The tow exhibit in, in Exhibit 17 would have been lawful. That was the tow of July 29, 2013. The tow, the second tow of October 15, 2013, um, because of the height variations and the inadequate space in the, the entryways were more than 60 feet, would not have been. Okay, who's in charge of putting it? Who does the legislature um, require to put the signs up? The signs are posted by um, either the tow company or the parking facility. Okay. Um, did, did anyone determine who did the, um, you said the parking facility, that would have been, I guess, the... The apartment complex. Apartment complex. Did anyone determine who is who put up the sign? No, I'm, I'm happy to assume the apartment complex put up the sign. Okay, did, did we consider pursuing charges against the apartment complex? I don't believe we have jurisdiction to go after apartment complex. Well, if the legislature said either one can put up the sign and they made a mistake on the sign, could we not do the apartment buildings? Well, the tow owners, I mean, the tow operators are given continuing education that signs must meet statutory requirements, otherwise the tow is prohibited. And so even if they put up a faulty sign, the tow operators are on notice and under a continuing responsibility as part of the license, not the tow. Okay. Uh, what was the deal with the, with the height? Was it too high? Yes. Because looking in the picture, based on the ground, it doesn't look that high. And I understand there is a berm there, so it looks like, are you basing it from street, from the public street level or the entrance height? From the street level, as the administrative law judge found, by incorporating a previous decision or previous PFD adopted by the commission, the measurement should be from the street level in order to ensure that the sign is conspicuous to owners and operators when they enter the facility. But, but if you put it at the street level from the street with that hill coming up, then you would have the sign almost underground or on the grass. Correct? I don't believe that that's the conclusion of the administrative law judge or of Detective McCulloch who rendered his findings and conclusions about the uh, visibility of the sign. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't make sense. From what I was reading on, on it too, and, and, and I mean looking at the sign and, the, and being on the berm and everything, you know, from ground height on the berm, it, it looked normal, but if you're a driver from the street level coming in, it's too high. But as you come in, but as you're turning, you're going to see it. If it's down below, you're going to totally miss. It. At, at, but but then you're coming up on a on, on a kind of a hill oh, turn in. Right. So it's it, it's kind of a variance there. But from what the detective said, as a driver, it was too high to see, and the and so that's what you know was. The, the detective said it was, you know, and beyond the six feet. Yuriko, I think also what's relevant with this sign height is that the driveway itself, the curb cut, was in excess of 60 feet, and there was only one sign. If there had been another sign, that might have um, but been, was, been oh, more noticed to the operator. But wasn't the sign on the right side of the road? I mean, that's where you turn in. So it's... I guess what I'm saying is for a penalty of $2,000 each, which seems to be like this is a terrible crime, you know, this should never have happened, should never happen again, it seems like everyone was making their best, you know, attempts to put in the sign according to what was required by statute. And I'm kind of wondering, since this happened, has the department moved the sign? I don't know. And have we made sure, like, well, we put it where you all want it to be? Because... It seems like this problem is going to be a recurring problem if we haven't lended them any guidance as to where that sign should be because 
The reason why I'm asking that is I can't imagine you put that sign anywhere else but there at that height. Because if you put it from street level height and you drive up that hill, that sign's going to be below your vision. And while you may not have seen the sign from the street when you turned in to park, it would have been right there in your face. So I'm curious as to what our person thought where that sign should have been. I think the administrative law judge addressed that in his proposal for decision. I think Detective McCulloch also gave um, advice to the parking facility about where the sign should have been placed. And where was I, that? Uh, six feet, or with the bottom edge no higher than five feet from street level. Uh, it could have been posted against that berm, against that, those Right, bricks. so it would have been on the grass. It wouldn't be on the grass. Well, well, I mean, you the, look at the, the hill, I bet that's off. four feet. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I really can't imagine where else you put this sign. I understand. I presented my case. The administrative law judge made factual findings. I will say, with respect to the penalty, um, this is the first violation the department uses the penalty grid that we've been given to work with. Uh, the purpose of administrative proceedings, as opposed to, say, criminal proceedings or civil law <clears throat> proceedings, is to effectuate specific and general deterrence, that is, to ensure compliance with the law. If respondent is making somewhere in the area of 1,200 toes per month, and each um, toe is at $250, $2,000 may effectuate some deterrence. It's not, well, and that's the purpose of the penalty. Both the uh, okay, okay the penalty. I understand that, but I guess I go back to, if he's making that many toes and this is the only crime, do we not think that maybe this seems a little excessive? And, and I think, been here before. Yeah, I think it's up to the commission, too. If we want to adjust that penalty, we can, too. So, And, and I think, Mr. Venegas, were you wanting to make a comment? Uh, or, you look like you were wanting to say something. Everything that's been said by Miss Miss uh, Deborah York was basically what I wanted to say. That there's no possible way of positioning that specific entrance sign other than it being in, again, once again, in violation where it's not visible to the driver as they're pulling in. That's it. Mr. Shaw, did you have a yes, comment? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, signage is a requirement, it is a state statute, so I appreciate all the comments about signage, but it is a state statute. In fact, you know, specific fonts may be required, and if you value those, you know, font, fonts, you could be fined for that. If you're in my jurisdiction and if your signage was wrong, we would fine you for it. So, signage is a requirement. However, I do agree that the sign height, sign placement, and the performance of that sign functions as it does. I think we issue many uh, sign permits in our jurisdiction, and uh, Mr. Yoko, I would love to hire you as our sign coordinator if you want to come and work for the city of Carroll. <laughs> because, because that sign, that sign does not, does not, in my opinion, when you say street level, that that is about three to four feet height, and you would be seeing that sign at three feet. And by the time you get to the top, your eye level will be above the sign. So, I'd have to agree with that. A couple more comments. Um, I think uh, the commissioner mentioned something about what about the apartment and what are they doing to rectify this issue uh, with, with the inappropriate signage. Are we following up with them? It's been two years. Is the sign, is the sign still up there? Um, from what I understand... Oh, wait, I think he was going to answer you. No, that's okay. I'd like to know it. Yeah, I'm going to come back to him. I want to finish my stuff. Uh -huh. Thank you. And he can wait. <laughs> uh, from what I understand, the tenant was refunded the money. Uh, the tenant was given back the money. I think the uh, it would be my recommendation to the commission to adopt the PFD, but look at a reduced fine. And I would entertain a motion for that if there is one, but I would like to look at maybe reducing the fine to $500. Yes. I first want to hear the answer Please. to that. What about the sign now? Um, as far as no, the detective did not require anyone to move anything. There was no no citation issued to either us or the property. No, is the same sign still up there? Or is there a different sign up there now? I believe the same sign is still up there. Do you still have a contract with that apartment complex? We have for the past 11 years, yes, ma'am. Do you worry about the liability of uh, that signage? Well, since the detective did not require us to remove it, and when we explained to him exactly that, where if we were to place it at street level, then it would not be visible to the drivers as they enter the, the facility. Because the, the wording doesn't comply with our, the TVLR. The, the, yes, ma'am. 
the, the verbiage is one word instead of it being continuous unauthorized vehicles will unauthorized vehicles will be towed at owner operator's expense it says unauthorized abandoned inoperable improperly parked vehicle, uh, vehicles will be towed at owner operator's expense we believed strongly that the more that the sign had the better it would be for the for the public I, i'd have to stop and read it i mean when i pulled in i'd have to stop and sit there for a minute to read it we only post <laughs> i couldn't read it if i was pulling in i'd have to stop so i mean if i were you i would advise that you cover yourself and change it to the correct sign uh, so, but as a tow company, well, uh, they can I change think, it. I so, they, oh, I, I, uh, Commissioner uh, Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom had a. Mr. Tom. Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry. It, it, is it Mr. Benavides? Benegas. Benegas. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, uh, you answered one of my questions. You've been there for 11 years? Yes, sir. And I, I'm glad you've only had two, two problems in that 11 years. How many toes do you think you do from this apartment complex in a given year? Oh Lord, probably, I'm going to say roughly about 20 to 25 tows per month from that property. 20 to 25 per month? Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. And so, how many from this particular spot would you guess? Um, are you talking about this tow that was at issue here? No, sir. That, that's this parking spot with the inartfully worded sign. Madam Chair, uh, this is Brad Bowman, General Counsel. I hate to interrupt, but I, I just want to make sure we're you know, are we veering off of what's in the actual SOA uh, record. Uh, I, just, I don't think that was discussed in the SOA hearing. Was it not discussed at all? And so we can't ask that question for our own edification in terms of assessing a fine or not assessing a fine? <laughs> I think our policy has been to to stick to the to the uh, to just, the record, but I'm just trying to put it in some perspective. Eleven years, how many toes? How many at this particular sign? I understand. Uh, Brimstone going to fall down if I, <laughs> I? I'm not going to try to stop you. I'm just. Do you really want to incite him, Dave? No, I don't. Uh, but I uh, no just. Uh, just to answer that, I, typically we try to stick to the to the administrative record. I don't know what harm there would be in this particular case of, of deviating from it, but it, it's... Just trying to be fair to all parties here and trying to get some perspective. I think you understand where I'm coming from. Just kind of want how many, you know, from this particular spot, the one that we're talking about with that sign or where the two toes originated, correct? No. Yes. Commissioner, I, want to, I, I do want to clarify that. These were two combined cases at the request of TDLR. Okay. One case is the one that we're talking about at the Seville Apartments that has this problematic placement. Sure. The second one was at his Springwood Apartments, totally separate, and the sole issue in that case was not height or anything. The sole issue was the verbiage. Sure. And as, as Mr. Venegas pointed out, one word is added, right? I understand that it's de minimis to everybody but those that got their cars towed. Well, and if I could address right. that, <laughs> yes, because, please do. Yes, because uh, Commissioner Yurko brought up a point about this, and as did Prosecutor Shirk, when he said the consuming public has to be aware of what the rules are with the signage placement and what's on the sign. I would concede that if the tow in this case was initiated as against a, a guest or invitee, in other words, somebody that's never been there before. Ms. Bailey White was a longtime resident of the Seville Apartments, so I can't concede what Prosecutor Shirk said about notifying the public because I think that if we were talking about a guest, that's a different story. We're talking about a tow that occurred that prompted this entire issue of a longtime tenant uh, who parked on a red curb, and that's what initiated this. And I did want to differentiate the fact that we're talking about two different locations, sure. two different apartment communities. But the management didn't instigate the tow, correct? And that's, uh, it, I, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking is we can't have it both ways. We can't point to the sign and say that's justification for the tow. And then when you make the tow, they point to the sign and say, but the sign's not correct. 
So you can't use it as a license to tow and then turn around and say, we're going to give you back your money because it was an unfair tow. Have you given back everybody's money who you towed because of this license or just the two that made an issue of it? Well, well, I think Mr. Venegas could talk to, to that point. Again, about was this the uh, items that was discussed, discussed is so inherent. I think we really need to stick to those items because if not, we're going to get way off base. Um, I think he answered that, 20 to 25 toes per month at this location. Mr. Moses, did you have a question? With no complaints, except this one in 2013. One thing I would like to clarify, Commission, is that um, when they asked if this exact sign was still at that location, that's, no, this is not the same location, but not the exact same sign. The sign was corrected as soon as uh, there was an issue that was brought up. The intention was not to try to confuse the public or that is not the intention of the towing company. It was we wanted to give them a broader, more information. We felt that the more information they had, the better the better chances of them not being towed for them. Well number one, okay. you can't put fucking bell on uh, my question. I think there was some kind of a, some kind of confusion. My uh, my experience uh, owning a commercial property is that um, is this is, is this is this your your sign right? This is the sign that you put up. No, sir. This is the is sign, that, the sign? The, that the community residential community posted. They put up. Yes, sir. Although you have a contract with them, and yes, they ask you to come by and and uh, do the towing. For That's them. correct. They put up this sign, and it, it's not your sign. It is. Did you who changed the language? Did they change it or you they, change it? They had everything done. Okay. All right. Okay. When, uh, okay. So, um, okay. In this case, uh, they put up the sign. Is that right? And That's you do, correct. you have a contract relationship. But there's also, uh, I guess, not so much in the case, but there was a question about who authorized the tow, whether it was done by management or whether it was done by a patrol. And it was done by a, somebody patrolling it. This community has specific problems, uh, sir, and they particularly wanted us to enforce these parking rules and regulations. So they so, initiated so the tow. However, we have the right under the agreement to patrol the property. And uh, exactly, and, and, and the tow was often was acted on based on the patrol. That is correct. Of the property. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, commissioners. Any other questions? Comments, yeah. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> well, based on based on what, what I've read and what I've seen and the uh, pictures that were submitted here, which are also submitted uh, to the ALJ, and based on what I understand what has transpired in here, I think I'm, I'm willing to say let's adopt the uh, PFD as proposed by the ALJ. Because it clearly notes that the sign is not exactly what's what's in our legal statute. However, I am willing to look at the uh, administrative penalty that has been assessed. I believe it's very high, and uh, um, I would just throw out a number. I'm not sure if this is the right number or not, but I would think of it as maybe a $250 uh, total fine for that. Second. Third. <laughs> Okay. Any discussion? Motion a second. I feel yeah. like a $250 fine is a little bit low. I, I think, think it is four, I think 4000 is way too high. Um, yeah, I think it's too low also. Yeah, I really do. Madam Chair, was it 250 total or 250 per 250 total? violation? No, he said too much. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking total, but I'm... Um, Willing to listen to, I would I would think maybe maybe five hundred dollars per per, you know each each so a thousand total. As a motion maker, I think I would not agree with that. Yes. Five hundred guys, let's just split the baby. As a I love this country. How about we just meet <laughs> halfway? <laughs> 250 for each sign and calling down. Okay, who made the second? I did. Okay, second. I thirded it. <laughs> Do you agree to that? I said it was a
Okay, we have a motion and a second for uh, $250 for each uh, uh, violation. Um, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, the motion passes four to two. <laughs> Madam Chair. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> just for a just for a technical well, basis, it, could we get a withdrawal of that first motion? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go to Alice. Okay. Uh, for for formality, formality, could we have a withdrawal of your first motion? Well, no, I want to withdraw my second motion. Could you vote on the second one so, without so, withdrawing the first one? Yeah. If there's an amendment to the motion that has to go back to the motion maker and then to whoever seconded. Okay, yeah, so we did have an amendment. Well, if it was 500, and it was, was that? It was actually amended by Shaw, uh, Commissioner Shaw and, and right. Commissioner Yurko, is what we had done. And the set, okay, so we had a. Then I, I think we're. Are you comfortable? Okay, yeah. I'm good then. So, so we don't need to withdraw, correct? Because because they did amend their motion to like, if, two if we two hundred fifty yeah, to per Commissioner violation. Shaw and the, and the and Commissioner Yurko. Start over. Why don't we start over? <laughs> yeah, they amended it. You, you certainly can start over if you want. If you yeah. want, you want to do that, and maybe reconsider your vote, and and, and start over. If you, if you do we need clean, to reconsider it? Clean vote on oh, that. Do you feel? I'm, I'm, Brad, I'm comfortable. I'll, I'll withdraw okay. my withdrawal. I'm comfortable too with the experience. Okay, Let, let's uh, for for the matter of time, uh, unless you want to reconsider it, uh, we'll go with the four to uh, approval of a five hundred dollar fine total, uh, two hundred fifty for each violation. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.